All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the UX functional group update. Uh, I want to start by apologizing for any background noise. We've had some terrible weather here in Florida and I had to relocate to find reliable internet. So uh, I'll do my best to, to keep the background noise to a minimum. All right, so keep this short today. Uh, first, I just want to intro the UX team. We're going to talk about what we're excited about uh, for UX, uh, things that we're working on and, and things that we're looking uh, into for the future, and then just a little bit uh, about the handbook before I, I open it up for questions. So I know we have a lot of new people uh, coming into GitLab, which is really exciting. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of remind everyone um, of who the UX team is and, and, and who's on the UX team um, for whenever you need to reach out to us uh, for questions, concerns uh, about an issue or something that you think would be an improvement. Um, so right now we're a team of two UX researchers and seven UX designers. We span eight countries and six time zones. Um, you can look on the team page for our areas of expertise. Uh, unfortunately, Pedro is shaming the rest of the team right now. He's the only one that's added all his areas of expertise. So the rest of us need to step it up a little bit. So what we're excited about, uh, we're actually adding a new UX designer uh, who's been hired and will start on June 4th. So very, very excited there. It hasn't been officially announced, so there'll be some more details coming soon. Uh, as soon as we do get that officially announced, we don't want to um, out anybody before they've given notice. <laughs> So other things we're excited about. Um, Auto DevOps, obviously Auto DevOps is a really important feature for GitLab. Um, and, and we've been focusing on it since quarter one with UX research as well as um, dedicated designs from Tori and really the attention of the whole team. So one of the big things that we've done is, is tried to make sure that it's a first class feature that users know it exists. Um, so what we're doing to continue that work right now is, is working on a UX research issue, which is the third link here, um, to really understand uh, how people discover Auto DevOps, what they know about it, um, and what they know about clusters as well, because that's really uh, key in setting up Auto DevOps and using it to its full potential. So we're really excited to work on the, that research issue and the design artifact uh, for 11. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the term design artifact, um, what that means is simply it's an issue where we're not implementing the whole feature in one go. We're spending uh, the entire milestone with front end, back end, UX and product to talk about, do discovery um, and discuss the best way forward. The outcome of that issue, it could be a wireframe, um, for future design to be done uh, in the next cycle could be the whole design and all the problems kind of worked out. Um, it really depends on the issue and the conversations and, and where that lands. Um, and the goal is not to set up kind of a monolith and decide what someone will be or something will be and then and then just put it together over a few milestones. This is true iteration. So it is about really understanding the problem boiling things down to the first iterative step and then building from there. Um, but we really want to get more of a holistic overview of things before we dive too deep. So actually being developed in this release for 11.0 is our comments redesign. I'm really excited about this one. Uh, on Hacker News quite a bit um, and through other areas in the community, we do hear that that we could improve in our visual hierarchy and our visual design. Um, a lot of people have commented that they have trouble with the comments. Sometimes they get lost. They're not sure where one comment ends and the next begin. So we really took a look at that to try to determine what's the best way to create that hierarchy and bring users through the comments um, and make it more interactive. Um, so Hazel did a great job working on this together with Victor and some of the front end engineers to really discuss um, what this should look like and, and what we could make it uh, be. And then another effort that we are working on, the design artifact issue has been worked through and we're actually breaking this up into iterative steps, is a merge request widget. Uh, redesign and exploration. And again, this is not going to be done in one big go. This will be iterated upon. Um, and this is just a view into what we are, the direction we're going in. But as new information comes in and we implement certain pieces, uh, that's subject to change and flexibility. 
Um, and as you can see, there's some inspiration here from the comment redesign uh, in this merge request uh, design and exploration. Uh, and this is uh, one of the first big things that G2 has worked on here at UX uh, in the UX team for GitLab. And we're really excited to see um, what he's contributed. So one of the big things that I want to say about this merge request widget uh, is that it has to support multiple workflows. And so the problem has been that there was no way to interpret uh, the best order for users to quickly digest the information based on what they're interested in seeing. So again, just like comments, the idea is to create a visual hierarchy um, and enable users and empower them to digest the information that's most important to them without being distracted by everything else. So something I'm really excited about uh, is UX polish <laughs> or uh, depth versus breadth, as we like to say. And polish is not just about um, making things shiny, changing colors and typography. It really is about taking these features that we've put out there and improving the overall user experience, making sure that it's the best feature it can be, that it's useful to our, to our users. Um, and so there's a lot of different areas I think that, that we could improve on and that we're focusing on. So one of those is updating UX of uh, notica notifications throughout GitLab, uh, kind of a hot topic this morning, I know. Um, so those uh, have been set out with banners and toasts and, and changing the way that we're doing these notifications. It's just a matter of getting them rolled out and implemented uh, within the UI. We're also looking at improving the overall user experience of Wiki, the admin area, uh, settings as well as the project homepage. Um, so the goal here is to work with each uh, product manager over that area to prioritize and schedule improvements. So they're all we're always chipping away um, at this and making sure that it's a focus for us. And the last thing I just wanted to touch upon is the handbook um, with two new designers starting and then um, kind of meeting with with a lot of new GitLabbers, uh, new PMs. One thing that that is painfully clear to me is that the the handbook is amazing and awesome and it's like the gateway for everyone into our culture and our company but it can also be an information overload. Uh, there's kind of this rabbit hole effect that can occur where you start reading about something and it links you to somewhere else and you link there and you kind of get lost in, in that link and so on and so forth until you're not really sure where you started or how you got there and you can't remember everything that you read. Um, so I'm working with Ashton uh, to focus on understand, understanding what users expect to see and we're going to do that with some UX research. Um, the link to the epic is there. We're going to do some card sorts, some tree tests, um, and that will be with GitLabbers. So please be on the lookout. Um, for the UX research study that we're going to conduct in the coming weeks. We'll be looking for volunteers and we're especially interested in, in both new GitLabbers as well as uh, GitLabbers that have been here forever and just kind of intuitively know where everything is. Like to see the differences between the two and how maybe we could improve the overall information architecture um, of the handbook to make it more effective. And with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. I see that there's some chat messages. Let's see. I'm just going to see if there's anything. Uh, comment redesign looks great. Thank you. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Would it make sense to have an auto DevOps wizard pop up when a new project is created? It's funny, Mark, that's something we've actually talked about um, in the original uh, auto DevOps research is that we really feel like having some point of kind of step by step process, a wizard or um, even Mark Puntek um, talked about maybe gamification or some kind of mix of the two um, to really help walk users through that process because it can be really confusing. Um, so that's something we're looking into. Oh, and Tori already answered. Thank you, Tori. <laughs> if I'd only read two comments down. Um, let's see. Awesome. Um, so are the UX onboarding tasks going to be affected by this research as well? Uh, yes, yes. I'm actually, and I didn't add it in there, but I am working on an extensive overhaul of the UX section. I'm going to break it up uh, a little bit more so that we have kind of an overview of UX, how we work with other teams, uh, with product, with front end, with back end, 
how we schedule, as well as um, individual workflows for UXers, UX researchers, and then some specific onboarding tasks. Um, we'll see how that goes. That could help inform how we decide to do some of the overall uh, handbook changes. All right, thanks, Sid. So is there anything else, any other questions? Doesn't look like it. Well, thank you everyone for attending and please be on the lookout for, for my handbook uh, UX research. I'm going to uh, uh, get all of you involved. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.